I mean, we kind of have a fish flakiness inside there. So I've been on this plant-based meat journey for a little while now, and I've made chicken, I've made a bunch of bacon, and recently I made a mushroom steak. But one of the most requested meats that I get a lot is people wanna see me make fish. So after doing a little bit of research, I found out that a lot of people use banana blossoms as a substitute for fried fish. The banana blossom is the blossom from the banana tree that flowers and eventually turns into rows of bananas. Inside the blossom itself is a bunch of little fingers and those fingers actually are what becomes the banana. I've done a little bit of testing. I haven't tested the canned banana blossom yet. I tried to make fish using fresh banana blossoms and I couldn't really get it to work. Let's see if this works. I think it's gonna be pretty good. I can see how this would work. Now I do have a banana allergy, so I don't know how well this is gonna work. I'm gonna try it. I think I'll be okay. Okay, so here we go. Let's make some banana blossom fish. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do to make your banana blossom fish is you are going to open and drain your cans and give the blossoms a quick rinse. You'll see in the cans that some of the blossoms are torn apart. You could save those pieces to fry individually, but really what you're looking for is the whole quartered blossom. Okay, so luckily I had a few cans of banana blossoms because I ended up with quite a few really good whole blossoms, which we're gonna use for our fish. Uh, these came out great. But then I also ended up with about a can of just pieces that were completely almost disintegrated. Uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can patch some of these together uh, when fried, I don't know, we'll find out. So buy a few different cans and see which one's gonna work the best. So let's move, I'm gonna try to save as much of this as I possibly can. So to make the banana blossoms very fish-like, we're gonna make two batters. We're gonna make a dry batter and a wet batter. So for the dry batter, we're just gonna start off with some flour. I have about a half of a cup in here. I also grabbed some roasted seaweed snacks. These are sea salt flavor. Now you can do whatever type of seaweed you have. If you have like some nuri, some dried seaweed flakes, I'm gonna crush this seaweed up and add it to the dry batter. And I think that's gonna really, really gonna flavor this, these banana blossoms. You know, I really thought that these would crush up in the uh, pestle and mortar, but they didn't. So I'm just gonna add them to my Blendtec. Gang, I'm a Blendtec brand ambassador. If you head over to Blendtec.com, you can use the code BLENDSTASH to get a pretty good discount on most of the Blendtec products. These little seaweed snacks are really great. You can find these at pretty much any grocery store. I bought these at Publix. Okay, that looks great. I think we have our seaweed flakes. I didn't want to do as big a seaweed flakes as this was, but it's still gonna work. Then to finish up this dry batter, we're just gonna drop in some Old Bay and a few pinches of salt. Let's give this a real quick mix together and make sure all of the seasonings and flour and everything's combined. Before we get started on our wet batter, I'm gonna get the oil heated up because the batter has to remain cold to get that really crispy golden brown texture that we know. So we're gonna go right from the batters right into the hot oil. We're gonna get this oil up to about 350 degrees. Let's start on the wet batter. So for this wet batter, we're gonna make it almost like a beer batter, but we're not gonna include beer because a lot of beers actually aren't vegan or plant-based. Uh, so let's do a wet batter using a soda water. We just have a cold soda water. There's a cold carbonated water. You can use club soda. You could use like a Perrier or a, um, even like a LaCroix with like a lemon or lime flavored would probably work pretty well. We're just gonna use a plain soda water for this recipe. Now I'm gonna drop in about a cup of flour. You know what, we don't have very much fish, so I'm only gonna do about a half of a cup. Do probably about a quarter cup, maybe a little bit less of cornstarch and about a teaspoon of baking soda. Now to really brighten these up, we're gonna use the juice of a whole squeezed lemon. Always happens to me, I got a bunch of seeds in here every time, even using the hand trick. And then we're just gonna drop a little bit of salt. So now at this point, all we're gonna do is pour in the soda water, mixing really well, whisking really well until we get a nice, almost pancake-y type of consistency. You want this to be very cold water, very, very cold water. And then lastly, what I like to do is just drop a little bit of turmeric in just to kind of help the color 
start this kind of golden brown color right off the bat. It's a nice drippy batter, sticks to the whisk, but then runs off real nice. Once, this, once these are dipped in the flour, it's gonna stick really well. Okay, our oil is at a nice temperature. Let's take our banana blossoms, we're gonna drop them in a little bit of the flour. Just coat them in that flour, drop them in the wet batter, turn them over, and then right from the wet batter, you gotta be quick into the hot oil. And hopefully those should golden up. Let's test one out and see how it does. I'm gonna test out one of our other, uh, the other pieces where I kinda just push it together and see how this works. Yeah, just what I thought, it's gonna be pretty hard to kinda hold these together. Ah into a friable filet. That one can just didn't really work for me. But let's drop it in and see what happens. Okay, this one's looking pretty good. It's actually looking like a fish filet, a pretty thick fish filet at that, but it's looking like a fish filet. So at this point, I'm just gonna repeat making as many of these banana blossom fish uh, fillets as I can. I think we're gonna end up with a pretty good amount of them, honestly. This big one looks crazy. It does kind of look like a whole fish fillet, but I just don't think the texture is gonna be right because it's all loose and apart. We'll find out. So these things just look insane. They look amazing. I'm really excited to take a bite into one of these. So let's go ahead and open it up See if we're fish-like. I mean, we kind of have a fish flakiness inside there. I mean, I'll be honest, that's actually really shocking. <laughs> I would never would have guessed that. Unbelievable. Just like fish, it's really light, it's really mild. This batter, just like a beer batter, this has like a very flaky kind of consistency to it. Like maybe like a white fish, like a trout or something. It's, it's actually very shocking the way this comes out. Wow. So our, our put together fish pieces, where we actually just took a bunch of different leaves and kind of put it together and fried it. It's funny, those leaves have a better taste, but there's like less fish. There is a strong seafood type of flavor. And the consistency, I actually will say that these came out a heck of a lot better as far as taste, texture goes. Wow, that's awesome. I'm happy about that. Well, that's what I got. This is the Banana Blossom Fish. Everybody that you see scrolling over here on the side are the members of the Sauce Squad. You can join the Sauce Squad over at patreon.com slash sauce dash. It's only a few bucks a month to get your name on the list. And if you haven't yet, make sure you click the subscribe button and click this video right here. This can probably be another one of my veggie videos. Wow, that is shockingly good. Holy crap. <laughs>